Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from What Kind of Man at YouTube with a video picture montage of the interesting hobby related things I saw in Japan. Now of course I took a lot of photos of historical sites and other things of interest but at the moment I'm gonna start from the beginning of my trip and work my way all the way to Tokyo. Also saw the Bandai headquarters and grew an epic beard. Within this small town I found two old stores with aged stock and the place is almost in ruin run by elderly individuals. They're very friendly and a perfect opportunity to pick up a Zoid and a couple of tools for nighttime works due to lack of nightlife within the town. The city of Hiroshima uh, even though I spent very little time in there, had quite a few opportunities for hobby shopping and a few shops for any sort of interest ranging from gunpla to military modelling. You had your regular large uh, camera department store shops and your toy stores with a small hobby range and all of the tools and products available. Let's first talk about department stores, as there were a couple here. You'd normally have your Yodobashi or Big Camera. We had a Big Camera here. And on one of the floors, you would have uh, dedicated nothing but entertainment, video games, DVDs, CDs, toys, bikes. And normally in its own walled off section or open, you would have anime figures, model kit stuff. With the model kit section, you'll have entire uh, shelving sections dedicated to your high grade gunpla, your master grade gunpla, the other Bandai kits, uh, military aircraft, 72nd armor, 35th scale armor, and an entire wall to all of your hobby supplies, every single paint, most Tamir, Mr. Hobby accessories, aftermarket stuff. Excellent for buying new products cheap and any hobby supply at a reasonable price. With these and other large organized toy shops, which we also saw in Hiroshima, have this fantastic thing of putting finished kits on display, uh, be it snapped or fully painted. When you go to a hobby competition or show, you're normally inspired by seeing uh, finished models which lead to uh, buying of kits. This is an excellent marketing strategy, but the actual kits built by the staff there are normally of a top-notch quality and very enjoyable to spend time there studying the detail of all these different models. Unfortunately and sadly in most of these shops you cannot take photos of them for competition reasons. Uh, being a foreigner I was like fuck that and I took photos. So some of these photos might not be that crash hot because I had to sneak around and I did get told off quite often. The businesses I'm interested in are small regional hobby shops that might have a lot of old secondhand stock laying around like Fuji and larger secondhand shops like the Yellow Submarine. These are the places that I'm buying the kits that are harder to come by on the internet that can only be acquired in Japan. We will talk about them more once we reach Osaka, Tokyo. This store was very good with uh, second-hand uh, Zoids. Some of them snap together, which you can repaint later. Other yellow submarines are good at pulling kits apart and selling individual components at a premium. This is a bit rare, but I really appreciate it when hobby shops do this. And little uh, hints, tutorials and tips on large laminated paper in some sections. In this picture we're seeing what paints are compatible with each other, the rule of acrylic enamel and lacquers on top of each other, including a description of uh, the different paints. I would like to see hobby stores in general do this more often as it can be very helpful to new hobbyists. This is another interesting thing that's exclusive uh, to Japan to my knowledge and that's a small space hideout for workshops. You have uh, an airbrush compressor and the extractor booth as well and this is extremely handy for individuals who have very small homes or large families that they can't spray around. 
uh, Japanese Sandman has raised this issue that he can't spray with lacquers uh, because he fears for his family and neighbours, and also that he only has a certain amount of um, hours per week that he's allowed to airbrush. This is an opportunity where you can pay cash to do whatever you wish. Kyoto had a lot of opportunities as well, and possibly more hobby shops in Hiroshima. In between all of the old uh, sites that I visited, the temples and historical buildings, a lot of the main streets had an independent hobby shop, including the large Yodobashi near the train station, and not too far away at a department store, a Toys R Us, and a soft uh, map. Now, Yodobashi is very well known to being mecha giant stores of epic proportion. When you go in the hobby section, you'll have large uh, pallets of the latest uh, high grade or master grade in just absolute mass quantities at a discounted price. They are also an amazing opportunity for cheaper stock when you be released or in general. But older or more obscure things are harder to find. The Toys R Us and other department stores were not as good. Uh, more mostly focused at uh, younger kids since they were in a obvious toy section where the Yodabashi would be more for everybody, especially adults with a lot of money and a lot of big ticket items laying around like compressors and whatnot. I also found interesting about the Kyoto store, which was even more impressive than the Osaka store, the amount of uh, space dedicated which let them have as many built kits on display as possible. I think I almost saw every single high grade an example and practically half the shelf space dedicated to snapped models in the Gunpla section. Uh, this is definitely very interesting to look at it almost like um, a hobby competition or a toy showcase more than anything. Again, sadly, no cameras allowed. Now, a thing about Kyoto, the small independent hobby stores really stole my heart. I think I enjoyed and loved them more than anything I came across in Denden Town and Akihabara. They're in more obscure locations uh, off the major streets and sites, though there were a few old rustic buildings with a front display of older models, beautifully hand-painted and hand-crafted to an old-school 90s, 80s standard. The inside part are normally dusty, dim, and so overstocked and cluttered it's not funny. But the older gems that you come across are absolutely wonderful and almost reasonably priced. Some of these kits have aged and sat in stock for over 20 to close to 30 years and they suffer a condition known as uh, box rot where the cardboard starts to turn a little uh, yellow, gives off a fine dust and feels a bit fragile. Uh, this smell is very fascinating to me and it really brings back the old golden age of the hobby where you didn't have other distractions like the internet or video games and people's ability to buy tools and whatnot were uh, limited. None of this airbrushing or fancy equipment. It sort of uh, takes you back and traps you in that olden time of uh, the hobby. Unfortunately, as these store owners who are elderly uh, hand over their businesses, this is a thing that will die off in the future, very sadly. Experience when you can. There were also a couple of very small uh, train hobby stores, uh, focusing mainly on diorama and uh, civil-based subjects. And in the centre of our town on the main shopping street was a wonderful multi-storey toy hobby shop with a underground pure model store. That had some uh, excellent, more obscure military subjects 
and stuff for your very serious model makers, including a array of tools and big ticket expensive items. A lot of these stores in uh, Kyoto are uh, kind of hard to find with public transport the way it is. With a little research on Google and Google Maps, can be very, very easy to find. I almost forgot to mention about SoftMap. You'll find this in most uh, Aeon department stores. That's a general electric shop that sells TVs and uh, video recorders, DVDs, that sort of stuff. But they have a large section dedicated to uh, toys and model kits, which they don't usually regularly stock themselves, but is a second-hand uh, shop pawn store type setup. And you can normally get older items that have a fair amount of uh, value behind them in both uh, anime toys and model kits at uh, quite a decent and affordable price, especially if they're located in areas away from Osaka or Tokyo. Unlike Kyoto, Osaka is very convenient as all the stores of interest are located in three easy to access areas by public transport. First at Osaka station is another Yerebashi. Uh, this one I have visited before and it is absolutely fantastic and massive in range and stock. It has a slight focus on the military trains and whatnot and its stock can be a bit more obscure compared to other stores just by a slight observation. If you follow down some arcades and whatnot into the restaurant entertainment uh, district you'll find the uh, Mandarake. To get directions is very easy off the internet. It is a very famous second-hand store multi-level facility with uh, extremely interesting uh, effects and uh, decorations of a tunnel and dinosaur bones and whatnot. I believe it may have used to be in a club or something due to its uh, rigged theatrical gear around the joint in a small cosplay karaoke stage. Nonetheless, uh, when you skip the uh, Dojin comic book level, there's a section full of uh, toys. And you have uh, two aisles dedicated to model kits, one all styrene, one all resin. A lot of interesting, rare and unusual subjects. Very reasonably priced, with a cabinet not too far away with its big ticket and very expensive resin and styrene items. If you're interested in your big ticket items or the ultra old, rare and uh, vintage, especially vintage, uh, Mandarake is uh, definitely the place for you, but make sure you stock up on your cash. Next is uh, Nipponbashi, or known as Denden Town. It's also easy to access by uh, public transport. The internet will give you all the uh, directions to get there. It's a mini Akihabara with many secondhand shops and uh, main stores. There is plenty to uh, look at and no matter what your tastes are in what subject of uh, modeling, even if you are not into anime, there is definitely something there. If you are short on time, some of the places you must check out is the Kids Land. Uh, there is two stores, one with a uh, giant poster of a Zaku Gundam and uh, Gunpla stuff. This is a multi-story toy kids shop, though there is a couple of levels dedicated to adult modeling and airsoft. Uh, these are stores stock are. Uh, some fantastic military subjects and some harder to get uh, styrene military subjects. A lot of stuff on supplies, reference materials, uh, paints, aftermarket parts and of course all your usual Bandai uh, Gunpla stock. In the building with the uh, giant Gundam and Zaku you'll find uh, a lot of interesting and more harder to get Gundam merchandise. 
including some entertaining pieces of architecture, including some mechanical looking hangar doors and a giant one to one scale hands punching through the wall near the escalator. They have a massive range stocking a lot of the old school kits, aftermarket paints, aftermarket parts, a definite must visit. Across the road is a double story second hand general interest pop culture shop. It has a uh, billboard on top of some Sentai characters or people in rubber suits or whatnot. This place is a little more expensive, though it's all got second hand merchandise, including one of the most impressive selections of vintage and obscure science fiction. Styring kits and resin kits from Volks Independent Suppliers and Ultra Rare B Club stuff. Uh, this is the uh, place I bought the Nightingale at the extremely reasonable pl price. If you're into your anime toys, there's also a lot to check out inside of there. You're probably definitely going to walk out with something. I did every time I entered. <laughs> Further down the street on the same side of the road is one of the large Volk shops. Now this is just an absolute treasure trove of beautifully, beautifully finished kits in display cabinets. Some of them you may recognize from magazines or professional modelers. I have seen some amazing, amazing scratch built and excellent painted kits. Some of them photographed within the span of this video. The stock is fairly expensive but you can buy premium tools, premium supplies, uh, array of uh, kits, uh, more of the difficult uh, ones to build including the Volks brand resin anime figures and uh, Gundam kits. Extremely rare, extremely expensive. If you see something there for sale, snap it up because you may never see it again. You'll also find other independent hobby stores and second-hand stores. Not as many as they used to be three years ago when I visited, which is a tad of a disappointment. But you will come across some high-quality, very uh, well-built models on display, either for sale or just for marketing purposes. A lot of inspiration can be gained, and Osaka is definitely an amazing place for the hobby. A special note to those second-hand stores that has nothing but rentable clear cabinets where an individual rent a cabinet and put their own personal stuff in there. Uh, people who do commission builds, build customized painter kit and sell it, will display their work in there. Corbett has a tiny anime mall. Uh, not very friendly, family friendly with card gaming shops and pornographic manga stores. There is a few second hand uh, shops and hobby shops with mediocre stock and supplies. You will see one or two things on uh, display and the odd rare kit because this really isn't a place that hobbyists travel to visit. Tokyo City, the capital of Japan and also the major hub for tourism. There is one awesome hobby industry of shops, supplies, everything you name it. The toy industry is quite famous and a lot of tourists who come want to bring home something special as a souvenir. And uh, Gundam Kits is an obvious choice so you'll just find small shops in the most bizarre and obscure places like airports, temples, cafes that will have a small selection of high grades and master grades for people to buy as an impulse. I'm going to target mostly the more hobby enthusiast areas, the areas that they would be more likely to attack than anybody who is just a passing trade tourist Lucky for all intents and purposes, again all the hobby stores are located in one very easy to reach area, Akihabara, the electric city, which is absolutely massive with all sorts of interesting shit to check out. 
and a little further out, Nagano. Uh, more for the locals than tourists or outsiders, and there's a lot of very special items there. I'll slowly number off each and every place of interest I thoroughly enjoyed. Outside of Tokyo, there is of course Shizuoka, an interesting uh, small city that's very famous for hosting all the hobby factories such as Tamir, Bandai and whatnot. did not get the chance to check it out because it's out of my way. The uh, Volks headquarters is outside of Tokyo, uh, sorry, Kyoto and was also difficult to access but that is quite wonderful and uh, Diver City within Tokyo where the giant Gundam is has uh, an interesting Bandai display including all the kits from the Bandai World Cup that won in their individual countries. Diver City I uh, videotaped and took photos and in future we'll publish a video about that experience. First, Nagano. Within the uh, outside the train station you'll find a large market and halfway through is a large uh, sign advertising Mandarake. Now apparently this is where the first store was open. Around the second third level you've got all these smaller stores scattered everywhere among some other toy anime interest stores and they all have their own special theme. Uh, your manga, uh, DVDs, uh, toys, and more obscure stuff like Star Wars figures, Western collectibles, uh, science fiction, uh, and vintage goods. There is about two, three sections where there are model kits. Not massive, but some fantastic specimens and selections of difficult to find styrene kits. Uh, a lot of special edition, special release stuff. Including Zoids, of course. And a fantastic range of resin with a lot of um, independent releases and Wonder Festival stuff. I've uh, definitely splashed out quite a bit of money there and for anyone that's looking for that very special Gentai kit, limited release kit or old kit that hasn't seen a release for a long time, a must visit place. Don't be discouraged, the hobby parts are very difficult to find but just keep on hunting and searching. It is a very scrungy, almost uh, dirty, cluttered location but the treasures are real and can be dug up. Next, Akihabara. Now this is a massive city square of a few streets with massive department buildings uh, scattered with anime images and large screens all over the place. Uh, there is a ton of shops which are undergoing cutthroat competition, everybody virtually selling the same thing and doing different things to be noticed or for folk to shop at. Uh, once you're straight out of the train station, uh, the nearest location is Yorobashi Camera. This is the Flagstaff store and if you are also into photography, uh, a pretty nifty place to pick up uh, your camera accessories or even buy a camera. They provide power supplies for uh, different countries so that's uh, something to keep in mind for us who take photos and post on the internet. Now outside of Yodobashi which just has the same usual stuff as the other stores, a lot of bloody uh, gunpla but a heavier focus on anime figures, the stores around um, Akihabara are scattered, uh, cluttered with other crap all over them and they're in all sorts of locations at multiple stories of uh, different stores. Uh, sometimes you have to climb a flight of stairs. They're everywhere so you really have to go through the place with a fine tooth and comb or uh, do your research if you've uh, got less time. But definitely the famous places to uh, find is uh, Aso Bit City. Uh, multiple layers of uh, hobby toy airsoft stuff. Some amazing kits on display with the very famous Dengeki hobby booth. The stock is anything 
special, but the small display cabinets with uh, finished kits is just world class. I remember the last time I was in Japan, there was a um, large uh, gentleman who is known to ride into Dengeki Hobby doing panel lines of a transformable Valkyrie with an airbrush, a pre-post shade technique. Uh, I was extremely glad to have seen said kit on display, uh, contained in this uh, video, and occasionally some interesting events uh, may occur there which you can uh, view someone modeling or look at a model of uh, famous proportion from a magazine in its cabinet. Uh, talking about famous, the uh, Volks store is not as interesting as the Osaka store, but has some amazing, amazing kits on display, also featured in some competitions. You will have to work your way around a few flight of stairs to get to, but there is a generous selection of resin kits and a fantastic selection of hobby tools. Followed by uh, awesome displays, the yellow submarine around the centre that uh, focuses mostly and purely on military kits just has glass cabinet upon glass cabinet of tanks, armour and ships, aircraft. There's almost more finished kits in this uh, store than there is models. A very strict no photograph uh, rule but definitely take the time to look through and you can get your more obscure uh, including imports of uh, paints, hobby supplies, tools and stranger military kits. The Kotobukiya store will showcase a lot of uh, prototype stuff and has absolute Zoid and Armour Core heaven. Some absolutely fantastic weathered and uh, built kits. Uh, some kits in their display cabinets I have seen in books and competitions before. Quite a excellent range of your uh, Zoid models and anything made by Wave Kotobukiya. A fantastic uh, joint to check out. Very close is the Mandarake uh, Akihabara Complex. A massive, massive black building with uh, two floors of uh, relevance. You will find some absolute treasures in there in the uh, top dollar glass cabinets. Uh, Zoids. Uh, the resin kits I think this had the best selection of uh, high-end, very expensive resin kits. Uh, the full collection of uh, Madoka, uh, Strike Witches stuff, a uh, lot of Magical Girl themed stuff that's uh, very, very expensive. Very obscure Gundam kits, anime figures, Zoids upon Zoids, aftermarket uh, bits and pieces and conversion kits most of them very expensive and the uh, styrene section has a nice selection of uh, older kits and big ticket uh, second hand items which you may save a dollar or two on your perfect grades and even better the many many second hand shops and shops with the rentable glass cabinets the rentable glass cabinets, uh, again, will have plenty of uh, kits on display that has been built by commission and are uh, willing to sell, so there is a bit of um, inspiring models out there to look at. Some excellent, some not so good, but definitely attracting a high price. In the way of uh, kits, I do not recommend buying uh, kits there as they're way overpriced and generally priced by the previous owner who normally has a strong attachment to. Uh, by all means, if you see something at a good price, of course grab them. Your second hand shops are just going to be multiple levels and in different levels may have the more uh, relevant area for kit collecting. A lot like Mandarake but um, more low key and low budget, they're going to be a bit trashier. There might be a cardboard box near the entrance or below your feet with just a lot of what appears to be 100-200 yen crap. They are definitely worth digging through because you could possibly find something that's quite amazing 
that does not have much of a value to the community but personal value to you. I have found some fantastic kits with a high retail value on eBay and the internet but has only gone for a few hundred yen in one of these cardboard bins or just buried under a wall of kits or on a shelf with a pile of kits in front of that. In these uh, shops you do need to do some digging if you find some places. Some shops frown upon that, others don't mind at all. You may be told off. I've always been a strong believer in the world of business for the consumers and communities. Competition, the more fiercer, the better. And with such a large amount of hobby shops, some selling the same things, other forced to sell obscure things or anything they can get their hands off is such an amazing shopping experience and opportunity. Some of these hobby shops to drag you in will have these uh, cabinets as I keep mentioning of wonderful wonderful builds. Others will have five examples of the exact same kits in different stages of being built or painted. Uh, little cards with uh, the model next to it with what they've done to uh, sell or push a certain paint brand, uh, product, top coat, tool, whatever, and examples of some tools like uh, pegs holding pieces in uh, a bit of foam or or whatnot glued to the side of the <laughs> a bloody wall. A fantastic and visual experience if you are a hardcore modeler. Uh, visiting Japan and its wonderful hobby shops is uh, definitely something I would recommend to everybody. A bit irrelevant, though I did go past the Gundam Cafe in Akihabara and Diver City, though unfortunately the line was always too long, or I wasn't with anyone if I had a chance to dine in, and I generally don't dine and drink by myself. I have to say the theming of the inside and the costuming is absolutely lovely and great atmosphere. I assume the uh, food and drinks are tasty though, definitely overpriced. I did have this little uh, pastry with uh, bacon and cheese in it. It was quite delicious and sort of affordable. Would recommend the experience. Also, just uh, something that's worth researching if you are visiting the country and you are in the right city in the right place at the right time. The Wonder Festival is a wonderful event to check out. This is a place where garage kit makers uh, come together, get short term licenses and uh, sell their product. These are practically limited run homemade model kits and some more exclusive ones from larger companies. Also around hobby shops, um, Yodabashi Camera and all that, especially in uh, Akihabara uh, on New Year's Day, will sell these special good luck bags that um, has a heap of uh, kits and random stuff in there that you don't know about at a very low price. Example, if you spent 2,000 yen on a bag, you'd probably get 6,000 yen worth of model kits inside. Now here's the hardest part as a hobbyist, the question between the stack of kits I've got piling up at home and what I want and what I'm currently building. Sometimes we collect too many kits and when you shop in such a cool area you see a lot of kits that you would love to have but unfortunately have to leave behind or just find generally cool and rare. Here's my list. I've uh, built one and got a couple of these miniatures. The whole set and individual ones do fetch a high dollar and this one was fairly well priced. I shit you not a Super Mario styrene kit with um, some sort of box be it a question mark or a brick or whatnot. Very cool never seen one before, don't know what box company, whatever it's from, but the price was just not right. First edition clear bag world tank series 1 to 144 scale kit from the museum series. Really cool find, something that is just so 70s and 80s. 
an early looking 1900s armor car with revolving turret heavy guns Japanese gold color strange armored vehicle this and another kit for some reason the um, image has uh, corrupted which is this large um, very roundish hull heap of cats lined up from it with a very grainy worm like color scheme is super cool and don't know why I did not buy sexy girl anime pirate ship space old school thingy again don't know why I didn't buy it had an opportunity to get it cheap and now I'm gonna have to pay a tad more for it uh, being Hasegawa may be limited so better get off my ass magazine special 135th scale Universal Century Federation Jeep I love my magazine special again not sure why I didn't buy Neon Genesis Japanese flying thing man this is cool absolutely massive 35,000 yen a damn good reason for not buying it God how the hell I'm gonna get it home and God the hell how I'm gonna build it but that is some wicked old school hand drawing box art of the Yamato this this is cool original nor resin kit girl in one piece again any sort of gaming memorabilia in model kit form is just uber rare and such a popular character as uh, Cloud from Final Fantasy a character I'm not uh, keen or fond of I have to admit uh, the kit would probably suck balls hard if it has anything to do with the uh, box art knowing what limited models like but this is definitely a fascinating find it's old, it's rustic, I have no idea what it is. I'm not too sure about the appeal of this uh, 90s era looking girl in a um, very average home uh, maker outfit. Though by the shape of uh, the box and the obscure location I found it in, this is a unique find. Looks cool, full stop. The Porco Rosso kit by Fine Moulds. Uh, any Miyazaki kit is known to be of high quality and very accurate. This would have been a fun build. Uh, this uh, box heart reminds me of Gunpla Builders Abridged. Uh, very, very funny memories and meme. The uh, box art on these two Ari kits uh, look very cool and they're very cool uh, Valkyries as well unfortunately knowing what the kits are like I think I dodged a bullet there various 7-eleven Gentai custom colored uh, kits of course with special 7-eleven decals 7-eleven's awesome I wanted a kit and found the classic RX-78 which I'm happy with but these other ones I did consider G3 Gundam and Xeong Gentai kit from 10 years ago I'm not too sure what makes this particular one uh, special if there's a color or special effect but 10 years ago that's cool the only thing that stopped me from buying this is my abundance of MS Igloo water slides and being able to replicate the color scheme via airbrush but that's a cool box art had expensive but I don't really have any Fetty ships so I shouldn't start now but 0083 man the naval review <laughs> reminded me of those full metal panic uh, very rustic older grunt suits I seriously considered it but the price tag was a bit high and was not familiar with the brand very cute but do not want this particular master gray came with a very unique and special decal scheme of uh, tribal dragon style tattoo effect 
very very cool but as a Chinese exclusive kind of expensive this is extremely obscure and I believe it might have been attached to a jump magazine celebrating its 50th anniversary or whatever this is strange any uh, G Gundam kit in hyper mode form at 1100 high grade or any 1100 high grade that matter is uh, very rare to see these days man I want this but the scale does not reflect the other macros kits I possess sadly love the MSV box art but besides that don't really do master grades rare as hen's teeth and wow that color scheme and box art very very cool looking but can be replicated more video game memorabilia metal slug is uh, extremely uh, cool in its uh, very diesel punk style any model kit of metal slug or even its uh, bootleg counterpart metal bug is very very sought after old school clear Zaku but luckily I remembered in time I've got the newer one so it's irrelevant and my version's a bit more transparent old school Volks Q-Belly Mark II that is cool I think I regret not buying the 1100 Galbaldi the hardest. Uh, 1100 scale Zeta or anything is very rare as they've never seen a re-release and had a limited run in its own right. A little more detailed, a little more articulation. The detail's pretty decent and I definitely regret not grabbing this. It looks fantastic. There is one or two other kits I've also got a small regret for, which I didn't even think to take a photo of, or, you know, some staff member was at my ass. But uh, this concludes my shopping experience as a uh, hobbyist in Japan and exploring everything that was worth looking at. Thank you very much for watching, and of course, until next time, uh, for those that are possibly unlucky enough not to experience this, I uh, hope uh, this has uh, satisfied a bit of your curiosity. Or